couple, three years, uh, we've turned on uh, fountains that went through a recent renovation. Last year we were at Volker, year prior to that with J.C. Nichols, and we were up at the Children's Fountain. This year, uh, the concourse fountain that we're standing in front of uh, has not gone through a major renovation, and that's okay, because it's in pretty darn good shape. Uh, it was actually built in 1939, and it went through a restoration back in the early 2000s frames. You're gonna see it come on here quickly. Um, 28 years ago, on Fountain Day, uh, we dedicated a fountain on Cliff Drive, and that fountain bears the name of Carl DiCapo, and Carl's with us today. And that's just right over our shoulder down along Cliff Drive. Uh, another reason for being here today is the KC Parks and Recreation Board and Commission started 125 years ago, and I think that's what it says in that sign down there, at this exact spot. Um, Concourse, Kessler Park, uh, we have Benton Boulevard on one side of us, Gladstone Boulevard on the other side of us. That was the start of our system in 1892. Uh, our system, those two boulevards, this park, parts of the Paseo, and a little bit further south of here became eligible and was nominated for and put on the National Register of Historic Places. That happened last year, and here we are today. And actually, it all happened in the month of April as well. So 125 years ago today at this spot. Also, a lot of great things are now happening in the Northeast area. A little more focus on the Northeast is always important. Uh, we were here about a month ago uh, acknowledging the great fundraising efforts that are happening at the Kansas City Museum, which is just over our shoulder to the north and a little bit to the east of here. All the great work that's going on at the Paseo Gateway, the intersection down here at uh, Independence and Benton, the Choice Neighborhood Projects, all the great things that Garrett Renaissance has done, uh, the hillside slides, the playground, the list goes on. All those things are all happening here in the Northeast area. So we're pretty proud of it. So that's why we're here today. I'm Mark McHenry with Casey Parks and Recreation. Uh, I'm gonna first ask uh, Dave Mecklenburg to come up, representing the park board. Following Mr. Mecklenburg, uh, Mayor Sly James will come up to the podium. And we're very glad to have Mayor James here today with us. Following uh, Mayor James, uh, City Manager Troy Schulte. And then following City Manager Troy Schulte will be Pat O'Neill, who is the president of the City of Founds Foundation. Mr. Mecklenburg. Thank you all for coming tonight. What he said, he just stole just about everything I was going to say because this is memorable that this is the 125th anniversary of Parks and Recreation. This was the beginning of the park system and the Kessler Plan, which we are fighting desperately to maintain and keep throughout the city for the foreseeable future. I also want to recognize uh, ex-commissioner Ann Garney and Anita Gorman who are here with us today. And Carl's already been mentioned, but he said again. Uh, again, thank you all for coming. Uh, we have so much going on here. This is such a beautiful, diverse neighborhood. It is typical of what works in Kansas City, and it is only fitting and proper that we dedicate Fountain Day today uh, to this area. Again, I'll reiterate, it was the beginning of our park system. It has been net recognized on the National Registry, and we have an awful lot to be proud of. Uh, please be sure to use our parks. That's what they're here for uh, throughout the city. Uh, basically, uh, you pay the taxes, you own the parks, so partake of them, enjoy them, and if you have any issues with them, please let us know. We'll do what we can. Thank you. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get uh, Mark McHenry some career counseling. Um, I appreciate the fact that you're so happy that I'm here, but you work for him. <laughs> Uh, and you didn't say that you were happy to have him, so I can only assume that there's something going on, but you're, you're both adults, you can figure it out. Um, good evening to everybody, it's really good to be here with you. It's one of my uh, favorite events of the year because it really does mark the beginning of spring in my mind when we uh, turn on the fountains and it's a good time to come and celebrate all the good things that have happened uh, with our parks department and our fountains and the work that they're doing. Again, 125 years of our parks department. And I think they've done about as good of 125 years 
as any parks department in this country has or could possibly do. In keeping with Mark's uh, misplaced uh, gratitude of me, I'm going to tell you, Mark, you're doing a wonderful job uh, and always has. This is one of the best parks director in this entire country. Uh, we have had a tradition of excellent parks boards and directors, and we have excellent park board directors with us now. Um, not all of them are here, but they're standing up here with us. They'll be talking to you. I don't see if there's a city council person out here. Daryl, Scott Wagner, you kind of blend it in. So, yeah, it's the suit. Not with that tie, but it's the suit. Uh, these uh, parks are landmarks in our city. Uh, they're landmarks that we all get a chance to enjoy. They may not be the type of landmarks you see in D.C., but D.C. is known for their monuments, we're known for our parks, and I think that's a very good thing because we treasure our parks, we like to be outside here. Um, and I want to thank all of you for your dedication to our parks and the system and to the support of the Parks Board and the Parks Department. Uh, these parks and, and the fountains in our parks are iconic. We're known as the City of Fountains for a reason, and one of those reasons is right behind me. Uh, I expect... Um, like the members of the city council and the, and the people of Kansas City to have uh, memories that are specifically associated in some way with a fountain or two in this city. Uh, maybe that's where you took your first date, maybe that's where you had your first drink, maybe that's where you got your first trouble, uh, or maybe that's where you saw your first water. But at any rate, uh, there's a lot of firsts surrounding these uh, fountains here. Uh, it's also a place where we can see kids getting a break from the heat, and we see a lot of kids right here. Uh, this is a good place for them to be. It certainly beats being out on the streets. Um, you know, these, uh, these parks uh, that contain fountains really do speak to who we are as Kansas Cityans. We treasure our art, we treasure our culture, we treasure our beauty, we treasure the parks and the fountains that are in them. Uh, we're gonna continue to work to make sure that each and every park and each and every fountain uh, continues to be top grade, top drawer, and uh, I want to thank you all for supporting the bond issue uh, that will help us do some of that work. So here's, uh, here's to a yet another season of beautiful Kansas City fountains and parks and people, and here's to a season where the parks and the fountains remind us, just like the water uh, holds together and is cohesive, that these fountains and our parks are places where communities hold together and are cohesive. And this is a particularly fitting uh, announcement and a place to announce considering the diversity in this community. Uh, one thing that we should never forget is that we are a city that treasures uh, diversity, treasures immigrants, treasures uh, all sorts of differences in cultures, in languages, in arts, and we're going to continue to do that no matter what. Thank you all for being here. Well, let me echo uh, Mayor James' comments uh, and on behalf of the, the city recognize uh, what is, uh, if not the best, near the best uh, parks department in the country. Uh, I don't think Kansas Cityans realize just what exceptional uh, quality they have in the parks leadership and the parks department who work tirelessly maintaining all of these fountains, maintaining all of this infrastructure is more than a year-round job. Uh, we we uh, never give them the resources they deserve, but we try to get them the resources they need to keep these facilities, all these beautiful facilities, uh, working um, as well as they can. And I want to echo uh, the mayor's comments about thanking voters for uh, approval of the bond issue last week because it is my goal that with the passage of question three never again should the city have to look at a fountain not opening on fountain day and that's one of the goals we're going to make sure is addressed as part of question three so uh, again i want to i want to thank the parks department for their great work i want to thank the neighborhood scarrett park I, if you get a chance i have gone down the slide a little bit to the east of here uh, i'd encourage everybody to go down the slide it's broken <laughs> it is now uh, 
this is when it's a partnership between the neighborhood and the parks department and the city great things can happen and Scarrett Renaissance the Renaissance in Scarrett Renaissance is testimony when good people come together work with the city great things can happen as a result of that so again on behalf of the city of Kansas City thank you to the parks department thank you to the residents of Kansas City for their vote uh, of confidence on, a on April 4th and more importantly thanks to the neighborhood in this neighborhood and all the neighborhoods around Kansas City for em embracing and supporting your parks for 125 years and let's get together in another 125 years to celebrate what, what the parks have become even in the future. So thank you very much and I guess it's my pleasure to turn it over to uh, Pat O'Neill who was a critical player in our recent effort to fix infrastructure in this city. So Pat, take it away. Thanks, Troy. Um, uh, you can't help but notice in the last few days, you know, the green starting to come into the trees. Finally, the red buds are blooming and the dogwoods are barking and, and all that. It seems like there's only th one thing missing before we can actually say spring has sprung in Kansas City. And of course, that's our fountains and see them flowing again. But before we start a count countdown uh, to officially bring in spring in Kansas City, I want to take a minute to recognize some uh, very nice and hardworking people and organizations that, that make days like this possible. Um, first, well, join me please in giving a hearty thank you and applause again to Mark McHenry and the Kansas City Parks Department. Their, their, task, their task is absolutely enormous. They do such a good job of taking care of our huge award-winning park system. And do you realize that they're, they're responsible for maintaining, catch this, 12,000 acres of parkland, 220 individual parks, more than 100 playgrounds, 150 miles of trails and bikeways, 29 lakes, hundreds of athletic fields, five public golf courses, miles of our boulevards and parkways, 119 monuments and sculptures, and yes, 48 fountains. And allow me to give a quick shout out, if you will, to um, and a thank you to the board of directors of the City of Fountains Foundation. The City, the City of Fountains Foundation is a volunteer board that essentially formed in the 1970s to perpetuate our image of, of this, as the city of fountains and to keep those fountains going. Um, and over the last four years, this board has worked real hard to raise nearly $4 million to uh, restore many of the city's most iconic fountains and help with the planning of, uh, of a host of new fountains that citizens are hoping to build in the uh, coming years, including a fountain to honor pioneers like the settlers like the Chotos and the Native Americans who came before us here along the mighty Missouri. I'd like for the uh, City of Fountains Board, if you're here, just to raise your hand. Pat Dunn, Vice President. Jim Bernard, Secretary. David Say, Treasurer. Ralph Caro. Casey Cassius, probably the hardest working former president of this board ever. Douglas Coe and uh, Carl DeCapo, better known as a fountain. <laughs> Ann Garney, Ollie Gates, Anita B. Gorman, also brought us a park in the Northland, Ken Miller, Heather Paxton, David Ross, David Schwartz, and Joni Shields, and our very much overworked but terrific uh, executive assistant, Peggy Farrell. Uh, Peggy, right. there she is. Uh, she makes us look good. And, uh, but also I noticed in the crowd, I did see uh, Councilman Scott Wagner's here, I appreciate that. Um, I see uh, George Costello, who runs uh, Union Station, has such, done such a terrific job with one of our other great landmarks. And uh, Kay Callison, who is uh, with the Miller Nichols uh, Foundation and uh, has helped us restore the J.C. Nichols Fountain just a few years ago. Also, Michaela Carson, where are you? She is Miss City of Fountains. Say hello to me. Michaela will help us usher on the, on the fountain. She will be running uh, in comp competition for Miss Missouri in June. Um, real briefly, the City of Fountains Foundation is in the process of developing a new Friends of the Fountains Club, if you will, inspired by the recent campaign by David Fowler. Who's here? David, where are you? David's back there. Uh, and he and other folks living in the city center, they raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring our beloved uh, Seahorse Fountain in the Meyer Circle on Ward Parkway back to life after it experienced uh, unexpected uh, but major damage to its operating infrastructure last year. And thanks to their, their independent effort, that, that landmark fountain, uh, which is passed by something like 40,000 people a day uh, from all over the city every day, will be back up and flowing in the near future. 
So thank you, Kansas City, for embracing our signature fountains and for sharing the peacefulness and beauty that they reflect. Thank you very much, Pat, and uh, thank you, uh, Mayor James, thank you, uh, City Manager Troy Schulte, and thank you again for your comments, uh, Commissioner Dave Mecklenburg. Uh, Alan Dillingham, of course, is with us on the stage, and uh, our newest commissioner, uh, Commissioner Shannon Cade, has uh, just walked up. Shannon, wave. Glad to have her on the board. And uh, our board president, uh, Jean-Paul Chiron, was not able to join us today, and also another member of the park board, uh, Mary Jane Judy, was not able to join us today. I want to make sure we properly recognize our great staff here today uh, and the work they do on a daily basis to take care of our parks throughout our city. Uh, Deputy Director Terry Reinert is here with her husband and our, I believe our grandson is over there helping her. Um, Travis Kiefer, Head of Engineering, Planning and Design. Uh, Lewis Cummings, our District Manager that takes care of all the parks in this region. Uh, Jocelyn Ball is there who headed up our fountain efforts for years and she retired and we passed that back to Jordan Klein who's standing there on Travis is right. Make sure these fountains get taken care of. And then our great marketing staff, uh, special events, Heidi Downer, Jesse Frazier, and uh, Carol Green is somewhere around taking care of business. So I'm glad to have them all here. And I saw Carmen somewhere. Carmen, where are you? Everybody knows Carmen. She's actually the one that runs the Parks Department in Kansas City, Missouri. Everybody knows that. And I hope I didn't miss anybody. Uh, but anyway, thanks for all the great staff for being here today. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy the band, and we're going to turn the fountain on. Five, four, three, two, one. 